Now it's time to see how to solve a PBR, a packed bed reactor, which is similar because it's also a tube which contains a catalyst. So we're going to do similar as the PFR. Actually, let me show you how would you do in case. First thing first, you're going to set the mole balance. You know that for PBR we are basing our uh, analysis not in volume but in the weight or mass of the catalyst. So you will have to set this to mass of catalyst. And the rate of reactions are based also here. So just make that change. And, well, the same conditions, of course, this is weight or mass. It's still zero, of course, and the flow rate does not depend on that. And once again, we're going to use the rate of reactions. Please be sure to get the net rate of reactions of A, B, and C. And since, of course, we're doing a gas phase, we cannot let this alone, so we need to substitute the concentration term, which is initial concentration times the flow rate at that specific uh, W which is from zero to final W, and the total flow rate. Now, once we set that, we're going to need to set this equation once again, the total flow rate, because the flow rate changes with respect of mass of catalyst. And sure, you need to do set all these constant values, initial concentration, etc. And instead of clicking wrong, guys, we need to model the pressure drop. So we need to add the Ergun equation. And not only that, you won't be able to cancel that pressure coefficient in the concentration equation. So actually I told you that you need to model this, but if you remember there's a change in pressure here. So let me show you what are we going to do. First thing first, you need to add another differential equation uh, we're going to have those of F of A, B, and C with their respective initial condition, which will be W equals zero, and initial concentration of each of, the, of these guys. And you're going to have this differential equation. Remember that Y is essentially the pressure drop coefficient, which is final pressure divided by initial pressure. Initial pressure will be a data, so please set it on the software. Now, this is the equation. Remember that alpha is this number here and beta here is this huge number, which all these are constants. All these are constants, don't worry. The y, you know y is our variable. We want to model the pressure drop. And since the temperature, okay, we have not temperature loss, we can take away that value. Actually, yeah, where is it? Oops, no. Yeah, we have not no temperature drop, we have this y, which is the thing we're interested. Alpha, I will actually set alpha as an equation. I will say alpha equals two times beta zero divided by this. And I will say beta zero equals all these and all these. And I will say uh, the density of the catalyst equals this number. The porosity of this equals this number. The area equals this number. Mass flux equals either this number or you know it's mass divided by area. GC, well, you need to choose if you're using international system, it's one. The particle diameter, I'm going to set it to a number. Viscosity, a number. So look that everything here inside is numbers, 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 numbers. So actually this is a known value. We have not temperature loss. Total flow, it's already set. Actually, let me go back to show you where. Total flow is here stated as an equation. What else do we have? Uh, initial flow rate, you have it as a value. You should have it as a value. You know, it's initial flow rate of A, initial flow rate of B, and initial flow rate of C. So just, you know that initial flow rate of C is zero, take it away. If you know B is one or two moles and two, you will have a constant value. So once again, we're going to have a huge set of equations and in the moment we need to use concentrations, which I told you, we will have this. We will not be able to cancel, uh, to cancel that term. So if you remember from the PFR here, yeah, 
we were using this, let's say, correction to our concentrations. But we cannot use that because we have pressure drops. And we, when we have pressure drop, we can only cancel this. This stays at as initial concentration. The flow rates, of course, stay the same. You cannot change them. Pressure drop, you cannot take it away because there's a pressure drop, of course, which we are modeling with Ergun equations. And since it is isothermal, we are left with this equation. And remember that this flow rate will be calculated with this equation, which is the addition of all the terms, Fa until, I don't know, Fc. So once we set all our system, just go back and you know it. Once you set all the equations, all the derivatives, all the mole balances, once you set everything, click run. If you have not set any term, it's because you have a degree of freedom. Maybe you need to set you know, ideal gas equals PV, all that. Or maybe R, you haven't set it as a number, whatever. But eventually you're going to set the system and everything will be okay, runs, and you're going to get graphs, tables of flow rates, let's say F, B, C, etc with respect of not volume but catalyst or mass of uh, or catalyst mass so as the mass increases what, what I do mean with mass let's say we have this pack bed and we have mass here so here I have 0 grams and at the end I have 10 grams so at the middle I have 5 grams so this will be 5, 0, 10 and you're going to react A and B to form C so this is this is how the graph is going to be look like. Probably you're going to have some different stuff. Actually, I would recommend you also to graph pressure versus W. You will have a pressure drop. What else do we? Have? You may also include how the flow rate changes with respect of pressure. So as pressure uh, decreases, actually it will be kind of crazy. It will be high, low. You may analyze how much flow rate do you have. Or total flow rate will be also interesting versus pressure and you can do um, as many graphs as you want because you have all the data all the tables you just need to export them to Excel and yeah I think we're done this example here is how to set if you remember example 6 or example 5 from chapter 6 is the same example but for gas phase you know that for gas phase if you have PFR you need to correct T of A with this factor here of A with respect of FT and if you have PBR you need to correct the concentration with not only the flow rates but also the pressure drop so we're done uh, we also have this example I will recommend you to check it out I have all these examples solved uh, I explain it to you in plain English, so I think there's no problem. So check it out in the web page. Go here, courses, reactor engineering, and you will find here my examples in multiple reactions. And that's for PBR. So right by now you should know that the PFR, PBR, how to solve them. Just set all the equations in the software and click run. In the next video we're going to see how to solve a CSTR. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out its content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, plays, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. 
Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.